Hello folks, welcome back to the channel. In this video, we're going to take a look at the B4 60 watt JPT MOPA fiber laser engraver from Commarker. The B4 comes in two versions. The first has a standard Q-switched fiber laser, which I reviewed in a previous video, and I link to that in the description below if you're interested in checking it out. The second version has a JPT MOPA fiber laser, which offers a wider range of pulse and frequency control than standard Q-switched fiber lasers, so you have more control and better options for things like color marking. Both versions are available in different power sizes, including 20 watt, 30 watt, 60 watt, and 100 watts, and they can be used on either 110 or 220 volt circuits. Being a Galvo type laser, it can reach engraving speeds of up to 10,000 millimeters per second, with an accuracy of 0.01 millimeters, which is around 15 times faster than a typical gantry style laser engraver, because the only moving parts on a Galvo laser are the small mirrors inside the module that direct the laser. Assembling the machine is very simple and only takes a few minutes. The lead screw in the support column is connected to the Z-axis motor, and then the column is fastened to the base with a few screws. The module attaches to the column next, and the hand crank is installed on top of the column for micro-adjustments to the focal distance. Commarker provides free EasyCAD software and the drivers for controlling the machine on a USB drive. After installing the driver and checking the device manager to make sure it worked, I opened EasyCAD, then I clicked F3 to open the laser parameter window and imported the correction file for the 110mm lens. Next, I set the focal point for engraving on a sheet of stainless steel. This can be done by either raising or lowering the module with the electric lift or the hand crank until the three dots that appear on the surface of the workpiece converge into one or it can be done by referencing the pre-established focal distance written on the label on the side of the module when it was tested at the factory, and using the provided ruler to measure and set the distance between the top of the workpiece and the bottom of the module. After the focal point was set, I imported a logo into EasyCAD for color marking. You can import images, create text, draw shapes, and create almost anything you want with the software tools. Laser settings like power, speed, frequency, and pulse width can be adjusted on the right side of the page and the hatch settings can be adjusted by clicking the H at the top of the page. For the first test, I used 400 millimeters per second for speed, 100% power, 200 kilohertz for frequency, 10 nanoseconds for pulse width, and a crosshatch with 0.05 millimeter line intervals. This took around two minutes to finish and everything seemed to work fine. The laser produced some interesting colors. This was my first time using a MOPA laser, so I wasn't quite sure what to expect. But it looked good to me, so I imported the color test grid file from the USB and gave that a try. The samples in this grid use different speed, power, frequency, and pulse settings to create the different colors, which took around 14 minutes to complete. Next, I tried marking the logo on aluminum and copper using the same settings to see what it does. Of course, fiber lasers don't just mark metals, but they can engrave into them as well. I tried the same logo on a piece of brass, but this time I made 20 passes for deep engraving, and then played around with the frequency and pulse settings to create different colors at the bottom of the engraving. Thank you. 
Fiber lasers can also engrave and mark different colors on most plastics too, like this piece of black acrylic. Next I wanted to connect the machine to Lightbird, which is my preferred software for laser engraving. It's not free, but it's not a subscription service either, so you only have to pay for the license once. They have different licenses available for different laser types. If you purchase Lightburn to use with GRBL controller type lasers, then you'll need to add the Galvo license in order to use a Galvo laser with it. To set it up, I click the Devices button in the laser window on the right side of the page. Then I click Create Manually and selected JCZ Fiber, then imported the EasyCAD configuration file from the USB drive for the 110mm lens. Then I named the machine and set the work area parameters and it was ready to go. After connecting to Lightburn, I imported another color test grid that I got from Ryan at Buster Beagle 3D. He had recently reviewed this machine as well, and he made some of the files that he used for testing available for anyone to download for free. I put a link to his channel and review video in the description in case you'd like to check it out and download the files for your own testing. This took around 20 minutes to finish, and the colors look great. But the samples that I've been showing you are just a fraction of the hundreds of colors that you can create on metal with a MOPA fiber laser without using any sort of coatings or marking agents. Ryan had also created this color file of Mickey Mouse from Steamboat Willie, which you can also download for free by checking out his video. This took around 7 minutes to finish. I have to say that Ryan did a great job with these files. They turned out really nice and provide a good starting point for testing and figuring out your own settings. But logos and cartoons aren't the only images that this machine can create. Next I imported a photo of my dog Jade to etch into a black aluminum card. The settings that I used were 1000mm per minute for speed, 12% power, 20kHz, 200 nanoseconds, 400 dots per inch, and I set it to negative image in Jarvis mode. This took around 18 minutes to finish. Jarvis mode is usually my go-to for photos, but when they get this small I like to use grayscale with fiber lasers because I find it easier to dial in to get much better detail without sacrificing speed with a higher DPI setting. You can see this grayscale image turned out a lot nicer, and it only took a minute longer to do than the first one. Next, I wanted to see if I could cut my logo out of a 0.3mm thick aluminum card. The settings that I used for etching were the same as the photo, and for cutting I used 3000mm per minute at 100% power, 30kHz, 200 nanoseconds, and 25 passes. The card warped a little, but the logo itself turned out fine, and 25 passes was just enough to cut clean through the entire thickness. Next, I tried 2.5D engraving a grayscale depth map of an eagle on brass and aluminum. I got this file from Digital Life Store on Etsy.com, and I put a link in the description if you're interested in giving it a try too. I created multiple layers for engraving, cleaning, and scoring an outline. The settings that I used for engraving and scoring both the brass and aluminum were 20,000 millimeters per minute at 100% power, 30 kilohertz, 200 nanoseconds, 0 0.02 millimeter line intervals, grayscale image mode, and 15 passes. The settings that I used for cleaning after the engraving were mostly the same except I changed the pulse width to 20 nanoseconds and just one pass. The brass turned out really nice. You can see how the final cleaning pass created different colors in different layers. I wasn't expecting that, but it looks great. The aluminum didn't create any colors with the final pass, but being softer than brass, it did engrave deeper with the same 15 passes, and it turned out really good too. Here's another look at them after cutting them out with a scroll saw and cleaning them up with a file.
As I mentioned earlier, Kalmarker's chuck rotary can also be used with this machine for engraving round objects like tumblers and rings. The chuck is spring-loaded and can be adjusted to clamp the outside or inside of your workpiece, and it can also be angled so you can engrave slanted surfaces or the inside of mugs or rings. Just like the previous 20 watt version that I reviewed, the laser head can be detached and coupled with the auxiliary holder for more freedom to engrave larger objects that won't fit on the base. I wouldn't go so far as to say it's portable because the laser head is still wired to the base which is quite a bit heavier than the 20 watt version, but being able to detach it does provide some versatility. So that's it for this video folks. It's been as much of a pleasure testing this 60 watt MOPA fiber laser as testing their standard 20 watt fiber laser was. Both machines are great, but at 60 watts this MOPA laser offers quite a bit more power for cutting and 2.5D engraving, while broadening your color options for marking with more frequency and pulse control. If you are interested in getting this machine, I put a link in the description below. Let me know what you think of it in the comments, and if you enjoyed this video then give it a like and subscribe so you won't miss the next one. Until then, thanks for watching and take care folks.